Hello, I'm Daniel with Sanwa, and today I'm at the Sanwa Texas Technology Center showing you how to install an electronic expansion valve onto a refrigeration system. Here I've laid out all the components that go into the install. The electric expansion valve, the stator that goes on top, the pressure transducer, the thermistor, also called the temp sensor, the run switch wire, the controller, and the transformer. Unsweat your old valve from the system. Set the electric expansion valve in the system. The valve must be installed in an upright configuration, otherwise the stepper motor life might be reduced. If you can't fit it upright, you can tilt it up to 15 degrees. Pull a wet rag around the valve to keep the internal components cool during brazing. Purge the system with nitrogen and keep the tip of the torch pointed away from the valve while brazing. Install a filter dryer in the liquid line just before the electric expansion valve. Thread in the pressure transducer. This is a quarter inch female flare fitting. It should be attached to the suction line near the outlet of the evaporator. If you're replacing a TXV, you might be able to use the same equalizer connection for this pressure transducer. Clean a spot on the suction line just after the evaporator for the thermistor, also called the temperature sensor. It should be located near the pressure transducer. If you're replacing a TXV, you can use the same location that you used for the sensing bulb. When positioning the sensor onto the refrigerant line, think about the face of a clock. Avoid positioning the sensor at the 6 o'clock position on the bottom because that's where oil will settle and oil will give a different temperature reading than the refrigerant. Shoot for the 4 o'clock or 8 o'clock position for best performance. Insulate the thermistor using cork tape. Use a second zip tie to secure the wire for the thermistor so that the thermistor itself doesn't rotate. Wipe the top of the valve clean and dry so that we can install the stator. Rotate it until it snaps into position. The controller should be installed in a dry location with an ambient temperature range of negative 10 to plus 140 Fahrenheit. Plug in the pressure transducer, then the temperature sensor, then the stator. Plug in the run switch. The run signal wires give the controller the on signal when the compressor is on and the off signal when the compressor is off. For most installations, this is connected to the thermostat. For other possibilities, see the controller literature on our website at sanwausa.com or the link in the description of this YouTube. If connection is not an option for your system, twist the wires together so that the controller always gets the run signal. Finally, plug in the power wire. First press the program button and hold for 3 seconds to get to the password screen. Then press the up button until the display shows the number 5, which is the default password. Then press the select button. Press up to get to menu number 2, and then press select until you see that RFY, which stands for system refrigerant. Cycle through the options for the system refrigerant until you get the one that you need. Then press and hold the select button for 3 seconds to store your setting. Here's a shot of the system running. The default view on the controller is superheat, which you can verify by the red dot on the left next to the SH label. Press the up and down buttons to cycle through the four main display options. The second option is pressure. The next option shows how far the valve is open, like 25 or 35 percent of full open. And the last option is temperature. So that shows you how to install our electronic expansion valve and use our EEV controller to set the system refrigerant. Thank you for choosing Sandwall.